I've been looking over this um, alpha gen and I uh, did some research and it turns out that this really is an Amiga 1200 inside. It is an actual Amiga motherboard. And if you look closely at the layout of the board, you've got a separate card here with a memory slot and processor, and you've got your main board here with a few modifications to make it work in this case. Of course, those modifications are all covered up. But this is a real Amiga logic board. Uh, possibly an extended production run, I don't know. But it's a 1200, so I'm going to show you what the 1200 really looks like. Since I don't own one, I had to go online. I found a guy who turned one into a desktop case. So let's see here. This is the Amiga 1200 logic board. As you can see, it has all the same ports. See? And this one has some modifications done to it, I believe. It also has this card slot. I wonder what that's for. That card slot should be under this cover here. Now keep in mind, this box was manufactured in 2000. So that means these have been in production in small batches for quite some time. Either that or they've been buying up used Amigas and converting them into character generators. But this is what the Amiga 1200 looks like assembled in its native form. It's an all-in-one design. And if you look closely at that motherboard and how that heat shield is installed, I'm sorry, the RF shield, it's actually angled to make room for a keyboard. This is getting more and more interesting as I look at it. But, there you have it. It is an Amiga. So I could go out and find some nice old Amiga software and actually run it on this machine natively and it wouldn't have any problems. That's pretty cool. Um, but what concerns me is this memory slot. I don't think the Amiga would have had... Well, maybe it would have. That is a 72-pin SIM. So I guess it's entirely possible. So, interesting stuff here. This power supply is an off-the-shelf power supply. Nothing special. It puts out plus 5 and plus 12. That's all it does. And what it does is it actually takes over for the Amiga's original power supply. As you can see, the manufacturer of this machine has soldered these wires the light on it directly to the power supply uh, power input jack that was one of the modifications they made to the board I really would like to pull this heat shield up and take a better look at what I'm dealing with up oh, there's that slot right there that expansion slot for the Amiga and so that is of course they had no use for it so they never made it accessible um, this connector would have been for possibly the original Amiga floppy drive uh, or something like that. Stupid light and stay on. There we go. But what does this thing got? It's a Motorola 6888-2FC FN33A. Um, here's a Motorola C68830. There's the processor right there. I don't know what this is for. That's probably a co-processor or something. But this is the same processor used in the Macintosh lineup from the early 90s. Pretty cool. But this is a, a bona fide Amiga. Space for a hard drive. I might add one. Why not, right? This has a two and a half inch hard drive adapter. This was... Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Two and a half inch hard drive adapter. Two 40 pin full sized. And that was used because the original Amiga plug was a laptop style. But they wanted to use a full size CD-ROM drive in here. 
and that means there's a good chance that I could add a hard drive without doing any major modifications. This is neat stuff. They've got a BNC connector here that's soldered directly to the video composite video out. So that's why that's all hacked up like that. Here is the channel selector switch for the RF output. So unbelievable. That's what it is. And this power supply, again, is just an off the shelf, nothing special. I'm going to replace it with um, probably a, a modified uh, micro ATX or something. I'll stuff something in there. All right, that's all for now. Okay, in this video we're going to start looking at uh, alternatives for the original power supply that had failed in the magic box. Now, here's the original power supply. This is an off-the-shelf unit um, that was purchased probably in mass quantity. Now, let me explain how this works. The power supply that was mounted in the box is nothing more than your off-the-shelf generic gas power supply. This is it provides two four-pin Molex outputs and nothing else. Wattage appears to be something like um, 50 watts or so. Not much powerful than more powerful than uh, it needs to be. Okay. The problem is the power supply is dead, and I can't find another one like it. But there is an alternative. If I had an Amiga 1200 power supply, I could just plug it in right there. And they cleverly called it an auxiliary power port. <laughs> Clever. Anyway, what happens is when the power supply fails in these, they sell you the Amiga power supply and a jumper cable. Um, all that does is it jumpers this cable, which powers the CD-ROM drive, to the one that powers the floppy drive. I'm sorry, it, it jump, it's, let me rephrase that. It, it jumps this one here to this, which is actually an output power from the motherboard when you plug in the power supply. So when you connect those together, the power, motherboard powers the drives. Normally, these are disconnected from each other and plugged directly into the power supply, which powers the CD-ROM drive, the floppy drive, and the motherboard. So, how do we fix this? I don't have an Amiga 1200 power supply, and I'm not going to pay pay for one. I don't want to put any money into this box, because I want to sell it and make a profit. So, I've got to do it safely. And to do that, I'm going to take the power supply from this external hard drive box. I feel like a, I'm committing a crime here, because this is something I actually need. But that's all I've got right now. So, um, This is a 1980s so the early 1990s um, external Macintosh hard drive. It has a dead Rodime SCSI drive in it, and um, it was made by Jasmine. It's a direct drive 70. So it's going to sacrifice its mini power supply for this cause, which is about a 50 watt unit, and um, will do the trick just fine. Here it is. This is the power supply that came out of that box. And if I use the original connectors, which I will, you've got your power input here, positive and, uh, sorry, hot and neutral. And you've got your, and I believe there's a ground pin there too. And you've got your power output, which if you look at the original connector, here it is. It provides just the right, it has a plus five, a plus 12, and two grounds just like it's supposed to have. So we're going to use this connector, chop it off, we're going to splice it into these two connectors here. This fits perfectly into this box. All's good. So, I'm going to start hacking this all together. i got to bring this to work where all my equipment is. And I'm going to start um, building a new power supply for the Alpha Gen. Now the symptom with this power supply is the power blinks on and off rapidly, so it probably has a failing transistor, or switching transistor, I should say. Um, I don't think it's a capacitor issue, I think it's more of a transistor or some other component. However, I'm not an electronics whiz. I don't have the time or patience to sit there and try to diagnose this power supply. 
I'm just going to rebuild it and uh, with a new new board. I've got one right there. And we'll be happy as a clam. I'm going to get it running. I'm going to put it on eBay and I'm going to hopefully turn a profit on it. We'll see. So as you can clearly see, the, um, the new power supply board fits perfectly in the case for the old power supply. And here's the old power supply. I'm again not really sure what exactly is wrong with it, but at this point I'm not going to waste my time diagnosing it. I'll just throw it away. But, like I said, it fits perfectly and I'm going to have to do some cutting, soldering, and splicing and it'll all be good to go. Okay, I'm warming up my soldering iron here. We're going to shrink tube and solder all the connections. And I'm going to take these little foam spacers here and uh, just put one down there and one down here. The board actually slides into a groove on, on this side here, and that's what will support it. So what we're going to do is just push it in like this, just slide it right in there, Put this thing in place here. Now it's supported on this end. Now on this side we're going to, we could do one of two things, we could either put some standoffs um, and make them nice and permanent, or we could hot glue the whole shoot and match together, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, because once this is all assembled, it's not going to go anywhere, believe me. It'll be just fine. Okay, well, it's all together for the most part. Uh, before I button everything up, I'm going to test to make sure that these are all correct, uh, that voltages are the way they are, or they should be. Um, but you'll notice that neither power supply manufacturer followed the standard color scheme. Um, typically, there should be two blacks, which are ground. There should be the red, which I believe is plus 5, and the yellow is plus 12. But you'll notice that the power supply that came out of here, um, they were using... Um, I'm sorry, they were using the correct color scheme, but the power supply that I salvaged actually uses a red for 12, I mean 5, black for ground, green for ground, and orange for um, plus 12. And the power supply that was in the unit originally it was missing a ground on this connector, which is done intentionally for some reason. And this one uses a brown lead for the secondary ground. Really crazy. So, on the power side, I had to use these butt connectors because there was no way I was going to solder them cleanly. It just takes too much time, and the butt connectors work just fine for that purpose. Um, on the power side, I just soldered directly to the terminals. And that is all set to go. So now, I've got to glue this back into place and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Test the voltages and make sure everything is good. And then I'll put it all together. And now the finished product. All reassembled. See how it works. Here we go. Here comes the bulletin board. <laughs> yeah. So, power supply was a success. I can now list this on eBay as a functioning unit. Yippee!